Good Friday morning. We are in our wind down of our 21 days of fasting and prayer. Two days, less than 48 hours left. I hope, I hope and pray sincerely that this has been a refreshing, revitalizing, transformative um, time for you. Um, my my prayer has been all along through this that God would just instill some new things in your life. He would speak to you in, in new ways, uh, that he'd speak to you in ways that you um, can't deny um, and that you would uh, hopefully have a new understanding of who God is and a deeper level of, of, of Christ as we come into this uh, 2022 so, hey, guys, men that are watching, we have our men's breakfast this Saturday, 9 o'clock. Um, Going to be a great time together. Um, listen, we get in, we get out. It, it's our, um, maybe a little bit longer, but not much more. Um, and we just want you to come and be together with us. Guys, we need each other. So it's so important that that you come and spend just a little bit of time with us. If you have to leave, you can leave. That's that's fine. Um, but come have breakfast with us. And uh, we got um, great, great testimony that's uh, going to be shared that day as well. So um, I, I hope you'll come and join with us and, and be there. Um, and we are really excited to have uh, Rich Flashman going to be with us on Sunday. And he's going to be, um, he's with a, a um, organization called Chosen People Ministry. It's, it's, the, uh, it's Christians, Jewish Christians who are reaching out to um, other, uh, other Jews to, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he's going to be sharing with us... Um, He's going to be sharing with us about Sabbath rest, and he's going to be taking it from, um, from the perspective of Judaism and how that fits into not only the culture, but um, religion and society, and finally how that translates to us as, uh, as believers today and why it's important for us as Christ followers um, to be um, sharing in and taking a Sabbath rest. So it, it's going to be really good. And as we're, we're reworking our spiritual habits, I think this is such an important one for us. So I truly hope you'll be with us on Sunday. Um, okay. So let me jump into some content here. I'm going to read to you from, um, James chapter, chapter one. Now, before I do, um, let me just share with you that, um, what I'm talking about today is barriers to prayer. Uh, why, why are there some prayers that just aren't answered? And sometimes there's barriers in our life that are keeping us from receiving an answer from God or from hearing from God. And we're going to talk about three barriers to prayer today. Um, so James chapter 1 verse 21 says this, So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. Now listen, Humbly accept the message God has planted in your hearts for it is strong enough to save your souls. So this, the reason we don't experience answers to some of our prayers is simply this. There are things in our lives that are barriers to hearing from God. So I, I want to talk to you about three of them today because they're so important. There are three things that can absolutely hinder your conversation with God. Um, think about it this way. If you're married or you're dating someone or have been married or have dated someone, you'll uh, understand this, that there are some things that you just, you do, you act, you, you, and, and the other person is just shut off. They're closed down to you. Um, you are harsh to your wife. And then you come back later and you're talking to her and she, she's, I, I, I don't want, I, you know, I just, I'm emotionally, I'm not able to have this conversation. Um, or you've hurt somebody or you've treated them or reciprocal. They've done it to you and you're just like, I just, I can't, I can't. Um, and I love you, but you know, we just, right now I need to cool off. I need to get over this. Um, I'm bitter. I'm angry. I'm, you know, I, I'm just not in a place where I can 
have this conversation. And that's sometimes what happens in our relationship with God. Um, so three things, okay, because I'm, I'm halfway through my time already. Number one, pride. And here's what happens. Pride says, I don't need God. So it looks something like this. Pride is, I've done everything else I can do. And, okay, well, I guess I'll pray now. God goes, whoa, where was I at the beginning? Why weren't you, why weren't you seeking me along the whole way? And, and when we use God as our last resort, well, I've done everything else. I, I have to, that's pride. I can fix it. I can do it. I can mend it. I can, I, I'm able to take care of it. There's a, a funny scene in an old, um, um, an old, old Western or not so much a Western, a, 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 a civil war movie. And I'm trying to think of the actor that's in it. Um, famous actor, but anyways, I apologize. Um, and he sits down, he's a farmer, very, very successful farmer in Virginia before, uh, the civil war, the civil war comes in and destroys, uh, his, uh, his, his home, um, Jimmy Stewart and, uh, Jimmy Stewart sits down and he prays basically this prayer, Lord, we tilled the land. We planted the harvest or we planted the crops, we harvested the crops, we stored the crops, we sold the crops. We've done all of this on our own, but we thank you all the same. Sometimes that's how our lives are. God, I've done this, I've done that, I've done that, I've, 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 I've. oh, but by the way, thank you so much. God goes, that's not a sincere prayer. I can't hear that. Pride's the first one. Second one is fear. Now listen, you go fear, I come to God because I'm afraid. No, sometimes we come to God or we don't come to God. We avoid God because we're afraid of the answer. Some of you, you're dating someone, you know you shouldn't be dating. You don't want to talk to God about that. And when you finally do, you're afraid. You know what he's going to say. Stop. Get out of that relationship. Same thing with our finances. You know, there's, there's some of us, we're, we're just not receiving what we want from God because we don't follow his commands to, to be generous with, our, with what we have, to help others, to support the church, right? To, to tithe. Um, the, and, and we go, well, God, I want, I need, I did, and I expect, and God goes, whoa, you know the answer to this. I can't bless you with more because you are not being a good steward of what you have. Until you can manage well what you have, I can't give you more. And we're, we know that, but we're afraid. We're afraid. So fear is the second barrier to receiving from God in our prayer life. Pride, fear, and the last one's bitterness. And the problem with bitterness is that we have a hard heart. When I have hardness of heart towards somebody else, it's really a sign of hardness of heart towards God because I'm to love my brother, I'm to love my sister, as God loves them. So you go, but pastor, it's a real hurt. They really did this. They really did that. I, I'm there. I get it. And so in those moments when I have bitterness towards people, I first say, God, you have to help me in this. Show me what I have to do in order to be free from my hard heart. I recognize it. I confess it. But the other side of this, if I recognize it, if I confess it, and God tells me I need to do something about it, then I have to be obedient. Because until I'm obedient to do what God tells me to do, God can't work on my behalf. It's my hard heart. Three barriers to prayer. Pride, fear, and bitterness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want you to hear us. We want to come into your presence and have unfettered access. And so when we come, we have pride, we have fear, we have bitterness. What we have towards others or, or what we're holding back for ourselves is actually, actually against you. Forgive us. Help us in this. It's our sincere desire that when we ask, seek, knock, that you hear and respond. 
And so I pray that you would expose those areas of our lives where we have pride, where we have fear, where we have bitterness, and that we would be obedient to give them to you and to do what you call us to do. We ask all this in the name of Jesus for your glory. Amen. Hey, tomorrow's our last day. I hope you'll join us. Finish strong. You got this. You got this. Less than 48 hours. Let's finish strong. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.